again. Next Friday, June 29th, has been declared a national day of action to raise awareness about First Nations issues, about poverty, the health care crisis, unresolved land claims. Over the next two nights, we want to give you a picture of what's going on in those communities. You'll see the challenges they face and how they're confronting them. And you'll meet some of the people leading the way. Our base tonight, a blockade at a quarry in southern Ontario, the focus of a simmering land claim, and the home of a descendant of the Mohawk warriors who once fought with the British. April 20th, 2007. Deseronto, Ontario, west of Kingston. This First Nations blockade shuts down the main CN rail line between Montreal and Toronto. Uh, we came on these tracks. 43-year-old Mohawk Sean Brandt is front and center, drawing national attention to Native people's issues. Today, that bus is here. Brandt has taken over the Thurlow Aggregates Quarry. It's not far from where he blocked the railway. We won't stop until uh, someone revokes this license. Um, we won't stop until uh, the concerns are addressed. This quarry is on the front line of a land claim battleground, one that is like many others across the country in many ways. It shows the frustration many Native people feel with the process of settling claims and their impatience with Native leadership. In 2003, we were told, uh, be patient, there's a process, be patient, uh, we'll work through it. And in four years, uh, I, I don't need to describe what happened because uh, we're standing in it. Uh, this is what's happened in four years while we've been patient and waiting. On March 22nd, Brant's patience ran out. His frustration turned to fury and this blockade began. And he has been here ever since. Uh, we couldn't sit uh, any longer idly by while the, the land that we were talking about was being trucked away. This land was given to the Mohawks in 1793 by Ontario's Lieutenant Governor, John Graves Simcoe, as a thank you for the Mohawks' help during the American Revolutionary War. But over time, it has shrunk dramatically. So the, the whole of the Simcoe covered uh, this whole area. And the reserve now is, is contained south. These are the train tracks. And so the reserve is contained in this area here. With the land claim, the Culbertson track comes down here. Brandt won't be satisfied until the whole map is Mohawk land again. When this is done and this is returned, this is the rest. And, and we're going from town to town to town to town. And we're going to take it all back. Brant's militancy started early. His first protest was when he was 15. Since then, he has been part of some of the most pivotal confrontations in recent history. Among them, Oka, Quebec, 1990. Ipperwash, Ontario, 1995. I guess in a lot of ways, the, the actions and, and those things that, that bring about change are our criminal activity, but uh, done with the, the best intentions and uh, justified and, and legitimate in, in our eyes. And it's, it's, it's part of that clash of two worlds that uh, people just don't understand. Ottawa, 1995. He fought the Assembly of First Nations, highlighting the rift many natives feel between themselves and their representatives. We've had a bit of a, a disconnect from the Assembly of First Nations for a long time. Um, I spent time in jail uh, because of that disconnect from the, the grassroots and, and our, our um, dealings with the, the Assembly of First Nations. Our Don Maracle is the chief of the Mohawks of the Bay of Quinte. I think sometimes if there's too much militancy, the government just digs their heels in deeper and won't cooperate. The risk is, is that, you know, you alienate, uh, you know, the government and, and the Canadian public. So we, we, we can't, we, we really need the cooperation of the public and the government. But Brandt has issues with the chief and his band council. He says they tow the government's line out of fear of having their funding cut off. And many bands are plagued by questions of how they're run. 
We have uh, issues with respect to uh, corruption within bands. Um, there is no accountability for financial spending. Brandt says that the band council, the AFN, and government cooperate in a bureaucracy that makes promises but never delivers. Which is why Brandt sometimes takes matters into his own hands. His car makes him look like the law. His actions show he's anything but. He is a renegade. The car came from a police auction, but the problems he sees on the reserve every day go beyond the land claims process and ban politics. So what's up? Hey, Jake Brandt, no relation to Sean, has bad water. Our water was tested with E. coli and, and bacteria, and you can't use it at all. As they talk, a neighbor from the reserve calls. The caller has cancer and is almost out of chemo drugs. The pharmacy has the drugs, but... They won't fill it because Indian Affairs hasn't sent the approval that they'll pay for it. I'm just over at Jake's. Brandt and, calls uh, the band's chief uh, to intervene. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a, a crisis with, um, with uh, Sam and, uh, and her medication again. The last time that uh, she didn't get it, she almost died. This problem will get solved, but the problems never seem to end. Every day is a crisis in Indian country. Recent government attempts to fix the land claims process have not softened Sean Brandt. The Senate report that they were speaking about uh, said that $250 million was the absolute minimum that, that was required to be spent in order to prevent the, the backlog from increasing. Uh, so I, I'm not really convinced that meeting the minimum target is, is what's needed right now. A lot of people want to know what this hardliner will do on June 29th, the National Day of Protest, organized by the Assembly of First Nations. When you talk about seven or eight communities that they can handle as hotspots, um, imagine if we put 70 or 80 communities out as hotspots. Brandt thinks the AFN's plan for peaceful protest is too passive. They talk about education, they, they talk about educating society. Uh, Mohawk people say that when a, a ten-year-old walks out of the school and hangs himself from the swing set, uh, that's the fucking statement. There, there is no other statement that, that needs to be made. Nobody, I don't care if it's Phil Fontaine, myself, or anyone, can make a statement more profound for the purposes of educating society than that. If June 29th brings violence or disruption, Brandt thinks Canadians should focus their frustration on government. We need people to know that, that pushing the bus across the tracks is, is our way of, of getting the attention in the ear of government, that uh, they're the ones that created this environment. But do you think you can get people on board to your arguments by blocking railway tracks, by shutting down transportation services. Yeah, if we've never had the support, then, then I think we should be less concerned about alienating it. Um, and if we do have the support, then, then what we need is, is um, uncompromised support. He says that the system is broken, that the time for patience is past, and when the dust settles here at this quarry, there are many more battles ahead.